the Ruger single six. Let's check it out. The Ruger Single Six was introduced in 1953. It's been a very popular firearm. Single action, uh, 22 long rifle or 22 magnum, and of course they've expanded those calibers as well. And there's been a lot of other changes to the Ruger Single Six. In 1973, they introduced the new Single Six, which has the transfer bar just to make it safer. But we're gonna take a look at this single action revolver. Guys, one thing about 22, it's inexpensive to shoot really slows things down a bit when you have that single action and it just takes you back to the old west. Now I got this single six from a good friend of mine Thad who let me borrow it for this test and evaluation and I really do appreciate it. Now again the single six was designed in 1953. Uh, the Mark I by Ruger was introduced in 1949. Uh, and of course, it's gone all the way up to the Mark IV. Uh, this is a very popular firearm, and especially during the 50s when Westerns were really a big deal. Now, this is a single action pistol, so it has a really unique design that was very popular, though, back in the 1800s. And we're just going to make sure this gun is unloaded. I'm just going to spin it around. Uh, the cylinder goes clockwise, and so it turns. And then once it gets to a certain point, it's not going to turn back, and that's the lockup. So you load your rounds here and you eject your rounds here. And then you just close up your gate, your loading gate. Now this one has a Pacmar grip, but typically they come with wood grips. One of the differences with the new single six is it has a transfer bar. And I'm gonna show you right here, when you pull the hammer back, there's a bar that comes up and protects the firing pin. And this keeps it from firing. Uh, with the older models, uh, actually prior to 1973, and here's one, one of the old originals. Uh, when you do bring this up, you can see there is no transfer bar. The problem with that is, is if it falls on the hammer, it can fire the firearm. And so a lot of people would only carry five rounds instead of six, leaving that chamber empty. And we're actually going to do a review on this one coming up. This is a 60s model, and it is an original single six. Now the single six is a single action. And so that means that the trigger does not actuate the hammer unless the hammer is pulled into the rear position. Uh, and then you can pull it and it's a very short break. Now I'm not gonna pull the trigger because you really need snap caps in here. Uh, one of the things you'll notice, and we'll have to drop the hammer to open up the loading gate. Uh, the chamber itself is recessed. And so your round goes in there and that firing pin hits the rim of the cartridge. And that's why it's called rim fire. And so it can actually hit a little bit of that chamber. And so you, you don't want to really dry fire any of your 22s. But you can see the stainless finish is beautiful. But again, it does come in a blued finish as well. Number of different calibers. Now, again, the convertible is 22 and 22 Magnum. You just switch out your cylinders. And to me, that is one of the most popular out there because it's so versatile. They also make it in 17 HMR. Uh, they make it in a, a 327 Federal Magnum. And so there's a number of different barrel lengths going all the way from 4.62 inches up to 9.5 inches. Now obviously single six stands for the six rounds in the cylinder. Uh, but they have now introduced the single 10, which is a 10 round cylinder. And it's in 22 long rifle and they have the single 9, which is in 22 magnum. Uh, also they have the single 7, which is in 327 federal magnum. 
here's your ejector rod and this is what you push through to take out spent shells or for that matter even live rounds if you have them after the range and this is protected as you can see this second pipe right here uh, we also have our cylinder latch we're going to look at that in a minute but you can pull this out and pull your cylinder out but the finish on here and on Ruger's typically, especially their revolvers, it's just really beautiful. Now this one has the adjustable sights. There are some models that don't have adjustable, but I really like the adjustable sights on these. Uh, windage and elevation, and then of course at the front, this one has a fiber optic. But a lot just have a black blade. The grips can be changed out pretty simply, but you know here is the wood grip, and this is a walnut grip. Of course, this one's been around for a long time, but they still use walnut on a lot of their models. And honestly, the recoil of the 22 and the 22 Magnum, uh, this is just an extra grip. It gives you a little more to feel your hand if you have larger hands. Uh, but otherwise, the wood grips work just great. Now, this one is the five and a half inch barrel. And to me, it's really that great sweet spot. Um, you know, I like the shorter barrels. Uh, they start to get long. It allows you for more powder to burn off the longer the barrel. And so you're getting a little better sight radius but I like how handy this size is. Uh, the barrel is a cold hammer forged barrel, which is typical for Ruger, so it's gonna give you really good accuracy and longer life. Ruger has introduced the Ruger Wrangler. Uh, this is an aluminum alloy frame. Uh, it does have kind of the gutter sights and it has a Cerakote finish. Now this one, of course, is in the bronze, but it does come in black and also a silver finish. It does have a, the polycarbonate grips on it, and this is made just as a more of a budget-friendly option to the single six. Um, you know, the single six, because of revolvers and all the mechanics that go in here, I mean, they're fairly expensive to produce. And so with the uh, Wrangler, this really brings the price down. We did a full review on this, and I'll have it annotated above. But this is a great little option. Uh, it doesn't have quite the refinements of the single six. I really like it. Uh, but it's a great little shooter. Now here is your ejector rod, and this is what holds it in. There's a little button on the side. You push down and just grab it, and you pull the rod right out. And then you open up your loading gate, and that allows for the cylinder to come out. Um, here you can see where the locking mechanism is for your cylinder, so this keeps it in time. And then, of course, at the front here, and this one is pretty dirty. Uh, but, you know, it's a really solid piece. This has a fluted cylinder, which relieves some of the weight. And on the 22 Magnums, they're typically non-fluted, so they're just flat. Now to replace the cylinder, of course, with your loading gate open, just drop it in. You have to line it up with the cylinder and then you have to push in this little the pin the release pin and there it goes and with the loading gate open it will turn close the loading gate and it locks down but guys when you're pulling that hammer back I mean it makes a really satisfying click there are serrations here on the hammer to make it a little easier to grab that with your thumb now there are a couple of different ways to fire this. Uh, one way is each time you fire it, you just pull the hammer back and then fire it. Pull the hammer back. Um, and you know, it takes a little getting used to. Uh, you know, you pull the hammer back, you don't know whether to keep your finger in the trigger or outside. Uh, you know, and so it's just one of those things learning. But if you're at the range and you're pointing down range, that's not really a problem. But to me, one of the fastest ways to shoot this, and actually the easiest, is when you're grabbing it with two hands, just bring your thumb back from your support hand and fire it. You can fire it really quickly by just using the thumb on your support hand. And so I would recommend testing it out and trying it because sometimes the timing can be a little funny. To me, it makes it really fast to shoot. But if you just want to kind of take it and pull it, like they did in the Old West, it's a great way to do it. Now, if you're shooting one-handed, you've got to definitely pull that hammer back. But with that transfer bar, it makes it really safe. And uh, obviously at the range, you need to make sure that you know, you're keeping it pointed in a downrange position. Now we're gonna check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. And I'll tell you guys, it's just a sweet, very crisp trigger. Three pounds, 13.1 ounces. I mean, it is light. And obviously you've got to pull the hammer back first before you fire it. And so it, it can be light and it allows you to get really good accuracy. Now I left some spent shells in the cylinder just to show you how this works. Right here you have your ejector rod. And so as you push this out, you line up your shell and then it pops out. And then you turn it and then it pops out. And it's adjustable to a certain point. If you'll notice, if I try to go back, I can only go back so far. So we get down, pop it out, and it comes out. Uh, and this is just the way that this was designed. Of course, it's a very old design with the single action. 
Uh, and so it's going to make it really slow to load and to unload. And so honestly, you better make those shots count. Then again, when it comes to loading, uh, you know, one round at a time. And same thing, you got to get that cylinder in the right position. Uh, but if you skip a place, you can always go all the way around. And you've got to make sure that the round is down into the chamber. So they just load right in, real easy to do. But it's not quick. Now watch, if you go past it, you can't bring it back. And so you have to just go all the way around, and then you reveal the hole, place it into the chamber. Close it up, and now you're ready to fire. Of course, live rounds pop out just as easily, but you use your ejector rod. We appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, they make a really excellent 22 long rifle, copper jacketed. Uh, this is really good shooting, all made right here in the USA. When you take any single action revolver down to the range, it just slows things down a bit. I mean, it gets you back into a different time. You know, we're so used to shooting, you know, semi-automatics, especially the striker fire pistols that are so lightweight. And yet, I mean, they've proven themselves for self-defense. But there's something great about getting back to a single action revolver. It just puts you in a whole different world. Uh, you know, taking that time to pull that hammer back, fire each round, and after six, you gotta reload, so you make them count. The low report of the round, of course, and you know, just the ease of shooting. There's very little recoil. Great for first time shooters. And of course, with this stainless steel or even with the blued steel, uh, it's a fairly heavy firearm. Of course, the new Ruger Wrangler, very lightweight, more budget friendly. But the quality of the single six, whether it's the old single six or the new model, is just really evident. And when you get to the range and you start shooting, guys, I'm telling you, man, I feel like I'm on a wagon train. Now obviously there's a lot of different models, a lot of different grip options, uh, holsters are readily available. There's a lot of aftermarket support and again these have been around since 1953 so there should be. Uh, it's just one of those iconic firearms that again that's been just part of American tradition. Now these start out manufacturer suggested retail at about $629 and of course market price is considerably less. Uh, again, I highly recommend getting the convertible with the 22 Magnum and 22, or if you're going to go with the other calibers, of course, you know, that's up to you. But uh, it's really great to have one of these around in that 22 caliber because it's so useful. Uh, it's great for pest control, great for hunting, great for just taking out to the range. As far as pros and cons, I would say that the biggest con would be actually the price uh, because, you know, you're getting a really quality firearm. But yet, there are a lot of cheaper options out there. The Wrangler's definitely one of them, but, you know, even some of the others like the Heritage. I mean, those are very inexpensive. But I think over a long time, the way these are produced, I think you're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of a single six overall. Uh, it's just a really quality firearm. You can feel it when you pick it up. And, of course, a lot like its bigger brothers, the Black Hawk, which is one of my favorites. But, you know, single action is definitely different. One of the big cons is loading and unloading. I mean, it's going to take time to pull that cylinder open and to load those rounds, and then again to use the ejection rod and pop them out. Uh, so that's probably, as far as a self-defense option, that would be one of the biggest cons. But uh, as far as pure enjoyment, I mean, this is great to take out to the range. Guys, there's a lot of modern firearms out there. But if you really enjoy guns, if you really enjoy shooting, having a single action revolver in your collection is just, it takes you to another world. And I really appreciate my good friend Thad for letting me borrow this single six for this review. Guys, check out Sportsman's Guide for all kind of accessories, shooting, hunting, camping, military surplus from all over the world. Uh, it's one of my go-to sources. And you get $20 off for every $100 or more purchase using Such, S-O-O-T-C-H, in the coupon code. And if you're a member of their buyer's club, you get free shipping. And that really comes in handy when you're ordering jerry cans. <laughs> so check out Sportsman's Guide. Great resource. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
Ruger single six was made. The ring, the Ruger single six was in. <laughs> the Ruger, Ruger. I believe this one is the. This one is the. Good lord, a choir going on out here. Birds, the bird choir, and we may just. Dang, I'm not gonna say that. I don't want to say it. I don't care about saying it. I got my black hat on, I can be a bad guy. <laughs> Any single action revolver. Really? 